too dang. Everyone's talking about the paleo diet, but not everyone understands it. There's two things that people get wrong about the paleo diet. We break down the biggest misconceptions about it to see if it's right for you. Then, these meatballs have been staring at them that they smell fantastic. We make classic American dishes, paleo friendly. It actually changes your hormones. Plus, does shapewear make you eat more or less? The surprising answer. Coming up next. Save lives today. You guys ready to get healthy? <laughs> Welcome to our big countdown show. Now, like most people, we here at the Dr. Oz Show love a good countdown. How many of you already missed David Letterman's top 10? Good guy's not there. All right. Today we are celebrating our season seven and we're gonna count down the top seven topics that we are obsessed with and you will be too. Here's some of the big ideas from today's countdown. We're gonna reveal and clear up all the misconceptions about America's most searched diet, the paleo diet. Then age-defying secrets from viewers who truly look half their age. Plus the new and cool health gadgets that I want on your radar screen. These things are not gonna disappoint. So the countdown begins with the seven things people get wrong about the paleo diet. Now, of all the diets out there, of all of them, the paleo diet is the number one Google diet around the world for two years in a row. And countless people are changing their bodies. That's why they're searching for it. For example, I'll just throw a couple up here. Literally, just pull these off the web. We have changes from, from this to this. We've got tons more folks bragging about how they've changed their bodies from using this diet. In fact, there's so many that can go on and on and on and on. But I'm not going to, because despite all the Googling out there, there's still a lot of misinformation about this diet. For example, the idea that you have to eat hunks of meat to be on it. Well, I'm gonna clear that up today. I wanna to clear up the misconceptions so you can make the paleo diet work for you and get those results that I just showed you. So, here's the record straight are the paleo gurus and co-authors of the Whole30, Dallas and Melissa Hartwig. Welcome to the Thank show. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Dallas, I see the amazing results that folks are posting, but there's still a ton of misperceptions about this paleo diet. Why do you think that's so? Well, there's no one person or one organization that sort of defines what paleo is. So there's a lot of different sort of interpretations of that. But the other thing is that there's also uh, a large degree of variability person to person. So different diets work better for different people, even within a paleo framework. Mm -hmm. So Melissa, who is the diet for? So a lot of doctors use the paleo style diet to treat things like type two diabetes, high blood pressure and high cholesterol, but you don't have to be sick to benefit. If you just want more energy, better sleep, fewer cravings or weight loss, a paleo diet is for you. All right, so we're gonna start off with the biggest misconception. I just mentioned it a second earlier about these hunks of meat, because you don't actually have to have excessive amounts of meat on this diet. And if I'm gonna show you on this table, go ahead, you can walk ahead of me. Sure. There are lots of things that we put up here that all are part of the paleo diet. So walk people through what you typically would do when you guys are using, when you're eating paleo. Sure, so this is how we recommend putting a plate together. It's not just meat, meat, meat. I recommend about a palm-sized serving of protein. So you can do this wild-caught salmon or pastured eggs or this grass-fed beef. And then you're really filling the rest of your plate with vegetables. So you can do some starchy vegetables like butternut squash or baked potato and then with some of the kind of leafy greens and more nutrient dense vegetables and add some fruit if you want either to the meal or as a side so we've got some peaches here some apples and then finally you're gonna add some healthy fats so roughly if I get this right half your plate is vegetables half your plate with vegetables yeah and it's a good mix of starchy stuff and some of the more nutrient dense stuff and then how much of the fat do you put in there so for things like avocado you could do between a quarter and a half of an avocado or you could do a closed handful of nuts and seeds or about a tablespoon or two of oil like um, avocado oil extra virgin olive oil or coconut oil for your cooking all right so Big myth, you have to eat only meat. People throw that criticism at the diet all the time. We've disproved that. There's two things that people also get wrong about the paleo diet. One of them is that calcium is a big issue. And they're always searching, how do I get calcium in a paleo diet? What do you think about that, Dallas? Well, think, the thing with calcium is that we tend to fixate on how much we take in, how much we actually get into our diet. And that's not really the whole story. So really, in the context of a paleo diet that doesn't have additional inflammatory load, your body is better at actually storing the calcium in your bones where you actually take in. And you can get some of that from dark leafy greens and things like that. And what about the criticism I often hear about lack of fiber? 
Yeah, so actually this is a great source of fiber right here. Um, all the different vegetables you're gonna, you're gonna eat and, and fruit, and both soluble and insoluble fiber is really rich and plentiful when you're filling half your plate with vegetables and fruit. All right, keep it on our top seven. Melinda in our audience has a question. Some confusion in your mind about paleo. Go ahead. Hi, so I feel like there's a lot of rules for this diet. If I'm not going all in, is there any point in me trying it? You don't have to do it all in. There's not an all or nothing, you know, you don't get any benefit if you don't do it all in. So really what we say is, ideally, you jump in with both feet, do an introductory program like the Whole30, and then go on from there and figure out how to make it work for you long term in a very sustainable and balanced way. What about people who think they have to become shut-ins? to go on the paleo diet. <laughs> Come on back, I've got, I brought some menus here. Just yes. throw it up there, Melissa. Yeah, if we definitely- If you were to walk into this restaurant, what would you order? So we don't want you to become like a paleo hermit, afraid to go out and <laughs> dine out, right? The first thing I would do is I would look at protein options and I would choose a healthy protein. So the chicken, the skirt steak, the grilled salmon all look like really great options. You're gonna wanna take a look at your side dishes. Make sure that the potatoes, for example, aren't swimming in cream. And then if you wanna add a salad, just take a look and make sure that you're not eating any sort of non-paleo foods like the goat cheese and the California bistro yep. salad. So if, if when I see that, what do I do? You would just say, I'd like the salad with no goat cheese. Um, it's really quite that simple. If you don't make a big deal out of it, the waiter and the people at your table aren't gonna make a big deal out of it. All right, number five. What's the question coming up here? The question you get asked the most. I'm curious because you guys are filling these all the time. Sure, I think the question we get asked the most is, how do I make this work with a busy schedule and a family? Mm -hmm. So what we say is, you know, it just really requires some planning and preparation and get the whole family involved. So involve the kids in meal planning. All right, let me go to Olivia for our number six question. Where's Olivia? Oh. Put your hand up, Olivia, let me see, there you are. Now you've been on the paleo diet, I understand, for three years. Yes, Is I that have. right? Yeah. All right, so how's it worked for you? It works out well. Um, I plan my meals on Sunday. I make them for the whole week. I always have go-to food like um, almonds, a slice of apple, so almond butter. I take a whole jar of almond butter with me in the car whenever I need. <laughs> whenever a, I need. a real fanatic. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Whenever I need something, I just go right to it. So planning for the whole week uh, makes me makes me stay right on right on track. And then in the morning I get up, I just pack my meal for the day, and then I don't come back till late. And that sets me. So there's uh, another question that comes out of experiences like yours. Uh, it's number six on our countdown. It has to do with how much of some of the things you can eat. Take a look. When on the paleo diet, you should only eat one serving of fat at every meal. A serving of nuts the size of a small fist. A portion of nut butter no larger than a ping pong ball. A helping of avocado the size of an egg. And if you want coconut oil, no more than half a shot glass. And finally, number seven on the countdown comes from Twitter. Cornelia posted this. She says, paleo is no carbs. There is no way for me. Hashtag paleo problems. So... What do you think about that, Dallas? Yeah, really what it comes down to is people will confuse carbohydrate as a factual food constituent with grain sort of products. So they talk about bread and pasta, like no carbs, but really you're gonna get some carbohydrate from the fruits and vegetables you're eating. You're just not eating the lower nutrient sources like bread and pasta. Mm -hmm. So just to prove that you can eat all of your favorite foods, not just the, the fruits and vegetables that we love, but also fries and burgers and spaghetti, all things I know everyone wants to get their teeth into. When we come back, we got the paleo versions of the American comfort dishes that you love most. Stay here. Next, can you believe all of these foods are paleo approved? Stop counting calories and start eating what you love. They're really quick, they're really easy. Six simple ways to make your favorite American classics paleo friendly. Coming up. All new Oz, tired, moody, forgetful. My mind is all over the place. I can't even think straight. We have your brain fog fix. Simple ways to clear your head so you can focus on what really matters. Plus, you want to have the freedom that you could do almost anything. Donna Karen built a billion dollar brand. See the new empire she's building now. I have so much that I want to do. All new Oz. That's coming up tomorrow. If you see behind me that juicy burger, those french fries, even those muffins are all paleo approved. Can you believe that? They look so tasty. Now our countdown show continues with six simple ways to make your favorite American classics paleo friendly. I don't want you always getting too hungry, you start passing out on me. So actually starting 
with our first item today, zucchini chips. These are Melissa and Dallas's favorite little snacks. You guys wanna taste them? Sure. See what you guys think about these things. Here's it, it's simple to make, slice up the zucchini, 350 degrees, you bake them for about 25 minutes, season them as you want, put a little chili pepper on these babies, white pepper, what do you think? It's good. Yeah, good. Not bad for snack, here, pass that around there. Don't eat them all at once, by the way. Share, <laughs> sharing is very important. All right, we've taken care of item number one. Number two, we're gonna do it with Melissa and Dallas Hartwig who are back with us. It is this paleo breakfast muffin. Mm -hmm. Why do you love this thing so much? Because it's easy grab and go food and it's a really nutrient dense and protein rich way to start your day. How do you make them? Well, so it starts, you just grab a couple eggs. You're gonna crack your eggs. Is that how you crack an egg? No, not give me, really. Give me this, give me the, <laughs> give me the eggs. There, oh my you crack goodness. The egg. yeah, are you guys good egg crackers back there? Yes. Who's, who's a good egg cracker? I'll try. You wanna try? <laughs> Show them how to do it the right way. <laughs> Oh my God, it's terrible. <laughs> Here, give me an egg. There, there's this, your egg. This is how a surgeon crabs. Hold that for a second, Melissa. Do something useful. You can do two at once. Come on now. Oh, jeez. Uh, All, right. All right. So you got the eggs there. Yeah. So, so I'm gonna whip these really quick. I'm gonna grab some mix of uh, onions, tomatoes, and spinach. I'm gonna throw it in. I'm gonna stir it up. And it's literally gonna go right into the egg, into the muffin pan. Is he a good whisker, Melissa? He's not a bad whisker. Does he help at home? I'm actually at all? a professionally trained whisker. <laughs> are you really? Oh, yeah. Is you are you really a chef? There's no. a certification. No, I made it up. Just whisking. <laughs> whisking, just whisking. <laughs> all right. So you make it up, it's pretty quick to make, I see. Yep. And then you dole it into these uh, these little muffin tins. Yep. Goes right into the, right into the pan. Is he sloppy like that? That's terrible. It's yeah, just... we, we both are. We're not neat kitchen people. It's not part of the paleo no, program? <laughs> uh, not necessarily, which is the good news. <laughs> all right. And away we go. Perfect. Can I taste one? Absolutely. Let me see what these look like. They look pretty good. They're good. And you, and you, just, you just eat them fresh, you can freeze them, I guess? They're, you can freeze them. They're also just as good cold as they are hot. So if you want to just oh. grab something and you kind of need a, a, to run out to work. We'll pass this out the break. I don't want food in your mouth, but all right. For lunch, Dallison is taking us into the kitchen to show us how to make the ultimate paleo burger. Take a look. Hey, Dr. Oz, I'm here to show you how to make a hamburger paleo um, just by modifying a couple easy ingredients. Uh, I've got some ground beef here, um, some eggs, some salt and pepper, um, and we'll talk about some fixings here in a second. I'm gonna start making a patty. Um, I actually like it without egg in it, and I'm just gonna kind of form it into a nice patty size, get some salt, get some pepper, sprinkle it on. So what I've done is I've uh, cut off the inside of the portobello mushroom, made it nice and flat. I can take the burger, I can get it right in there just like I would with a bun. I can then grab some onion, some tomato, I can grab some bacon, I can put some lettuce on there if I want, and then what I have is portobello mushroom burger. That was fast! And what do you normally serve the burger with? So actually a really great way to serve a burger that's not, um, that's gluten free, that doesn't have any of the refined grains, actually to use a portobello mushroom as the bun. So you still have that same effect of like hands on, you know, kind of eating the burger. So what I've done here is I've put a, together a burger with some bacon, lettuce, tomato, pickles, onions, whatever your fixings are, and then I've sandwiched it between the two portobello mushrooms. And you, do I get this also as part of this deal? Yeah, so that's uh, turnip fries, which kind of go along with us. So you turnip get whole, fries? Yes, yeah, so you get the whole burger and fries effect. Let me pass these around. Don't get, it, don't, don't get them stuck in your teeth. It looks really bad on television. <laughs> all right. Now, there are, there's some hearty meals that a lot of us do not associate at all with being on a paleo diet. And I gotta say, I, I, both of these, we're gonna talk about the meatballs in a second, seem like that. You don't think calories are important at all in, weight, in losing weight? You know, calories are something that are kind of misunderstood. And, and when you're eating really nutrient-dense food that has those built-in society signals that are protein and fat and micronutrients, you're, you will naturally self-regulate how much you eat and not have to rely on mathematics to do it. Mm -hmm. All right, dinner. These meatballs, I've been staring at them. They're close to me. They smell fantastic. They do. You've got a new little take on this, don't you? Yeah, so, you know, spaghetti and meatballs are a very kind of traditional comfort meal, and you can still have that on a paleo diet. Plus, it's really kid-friendly. So what we've got here are meatballs made with ground beef. We've sprinkled a little bit of chopped bacon in there for flavor. And then I've got zucchini noodles, or what we call zoodles. So we can use a julienne peeler or a spiralizer, and you've got your kind of spaghetti base, but with a much more nutrient-dense uh, profile. Now, I want to see how you did it. Is that okay? Absolutely. We actually put her in the kitchen. Take a look at me. Melissa's making this classic dinner dish. Hi, Dr. Oz. I'm here in the kitchen making bacon meatballs with zucchini noodles or zoodles. So I'm going to start with some grass-fed ground beef, and then I've got some spices that I'm going to add to just kind of give it some delicious flavors. Then I'm going to add some tomato paste, and we'll break the egg in. And then finally, the secret ingredient, which is chopped bacon. So you can think of using it more like a seasoning and less like a main ingredient for your meal. And you're gonna place them on a foil-lined cookie sheet. 
So once I've made all my meatballs, I'm just gonna pop them in the oven. And now I'm gonna prepare my zucchini noodles. You can use a julienne peeler. As you peel the vegetable, it kind of takes noodle-like chunks out of the flesh. And then it's time to briefly saute them cooking them in a pan for about three to four minutes. The best way to tell if your zucchini noodles are done is just to taste one. Perfect, you want it crisp, tender, but not too soggy. I'm gonna transfer some to a plate. Okay, so I'm gonna take some meatballs, I'm gonna place them over my zucchini noodles. So I'm gonna do just a little bit of salt and pepper to taste. You could add some red chili pepper flakes, you could even garnish with uh, your homemade tomato sauce or some pesto. Top with a little bit of freshly chopped parsley and serve. Looks fabulous. Yeah. Elegantly done. Thank you. Now, I gotta say, I, I understand now that I see these paleo dishes that I probably wouldn't cheat on them, but that is actually one of the biggest questions that we're trying to address today. You, yeah. You don't think people will cheat eating this way? So we don't like to phrase it in terms of cheating. You're not really cheating on anything, but people do experience fewer cravings on a paleo diet. So much uh, about cravings, especially sugar cravings, is related to blood sugar volatility, those right. ups and downs. Yep. And because your blood sugar is so much better regulated on a paleo diet, people typically experience fewer cravings. It's so not just the taste, it actually changes your hormones. So it you does. won't crave them quite the same Absolutely. way. Absolutely. Yeah, you guys shouldn't beat yourselves up so much about the cravings. It really is your body telling you that something's going on inside that's not right. If you eat the right things, you'll help deal with the cravings. If you eat the right things, and it will also change your taste. You'll be able to naturally appreciate the sweetness in things like fruit. Right. Finally, if that's not enough, we have a dessert here, which I'm told is to die for, but we're gonna test it right here. This is your favorite paleo dessert. Yes, yeah, so if you're having a dinner party or people over or some kind of an event and you wanna prepare a dessert, these are coconut date balls. Yeah. So it's nuts and seeds, some dates, rolled in some toasted coconut. They're really quick, they're really easy. Take one, that gives the whole thing to you. <laughs> they're not all yours. That's so awkward. Here, here hit me that mic for a second. Here, you can have this. I'll trade you the mic for this coconut ball. Ooh, that's a good deal. Thank you. What do you think? And I think Oh, she's so greedy, she didn't eat it yet. <laughs> Thank you very, very much. Listen, love your work. Thank you very much. And check out Dallas and Melissa Hartwig's book, The Whole 30 Plus. Head to DrRoz.com for these recipes and more on how to make paleo work for you. I'll be right back. Next, we all want the fountain of youth, but I have something better. It's actually sort of a smart idea. Five cool things our viewers are doing to defy their age. Got a little bite to it. Is it? <laughs> Simple tricks to help you look and feel younger. Coming up. Welcome back to my countdown show. Now my viewers have five cool things they're doing to defy their age. And they say they can help you look and feel younger. And I know it's never proper to ask a woman her age, but the women you're about to meet say it loud and proud. Let's start off with Wendy. Any idea how old she is? Yellow Ma, what do you guys think? 42. Right, 30s, 40s, 50s, right? Well, that, that, I'm hearing a lot of 40s out there, some 50s. Let's find out if you have it right and reveal the first two age-defying tips from Wendy. Hi, Dr. Oz, I'm Wendy Eater from California. And people can never guess my age. They're shocked when I tell them. But I'm very proud to say that I'm 63 years old. Now the first cool thing I do to defy my age well into my 60s is the most simple item that everyone has at home. Ice. I rub ice all over my face each time I wash it. It closes my pores. This is something people don't know. The second cool thing I do to defy my age is I get at least 30% of protein in my diet every day. Part of staying young is staying strong, building muscle, and keeping your energy up, which is essential so nothing about you sets. She looks so good. I'm gonna start using this ice myself. Here, test that down. I give you food most of the time, take the ice. Don't eat it, use it like this. It's actually sort of a smart idea, it closes up those pores. What do you think? It's a little cold, but. It's a little cold. I could feel it. But if it keeps you looking like that when you do it? Oh yeah, I, I would too, all right. Sandra's here, and she's proud of her age. Let's reveal it to us. Are you here, Sandra? I am Sandra. You do look wonderful, Thank and I you. don't want to even guess. Uh, yeah, we have I would, to guess. 
I give would it, say give it a wild guess. I'm going to say late 40s, although you look younger than that to me. But okay. I'm guessing that you're older than your, the age you look. So late 40s. Mm, no. No? Try again. 52. You won't, insult, you won't insult me. 52. No. What did you say, 58? Oh, they can see your card. <laughs> they saw her. No. Cheater. They're cheating that back. Actually, that's actually wrong. Keep going. 59. 59. Are you really? 59. And you have the third cool thing we all need to do to, to stay young. What do you do yes. to look so good? So what I do is I actually do an ancient procedure. It's turmeric powder that you can get right in the supermarket. It's a half a cup of water. And mix it up in the morning and drink that on an empty stomach. It'll actually detoxify your liver. And once the liver is detoxified, your skin will look radiant. Mm. How is that? It's got a little bite to it. Is it? <laughs> I'd mix this with vodka for sure. You would? Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 we're cleansing the liver. We're cleansing the liver. So you drink that in the morning because a lot of times when the liver gets decongested, the skin will take over. Yeah. So then the skin will get, because the skin's like, oh, wow, the liver is really clogged. So why don't we help it a little bit and start cleansing the body? So all these ailments and skin conditions and saggy skin and dullness and eczema, psoriasis, rosacea will start coming out on the skin. But once you cleanse the liver every morning, the skin will clear up. It'll be supple, soft, and even toned. Well, you know, I, tell you, they, I know that they use this a lot in India and other parts of yes, the world. Yes, that's right. And it's part of their medicinal tradition. We don't think about it much here. There is some evidence, by the way, that it's, it is anti-inflammatory. But I love the fact that you're using it. And frankly, if it's working for you, I, <laughs> I want to try it too. Great, every morning. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Right. The fourth and fifth tip to define your age come from Felicia. How are you? So I'm going to have to ask if you're okay with I know you want to bark it out anyway. You, you also look fantastic. Thank you. Thank but I'm, I'm so intimidated from, from Wendy and other experiences <laughs> on the stage that I'm not going to guess. So how old are you? I'm going 50. Are you serious? Yes. <laughs> so how do you do it? Um, your eyes look perfect. Well, one of the things that my favorite and coolest thing that I do to define my age is that I swear by tea bags. For those of you that have tired eyes or puffiness, I work for traders, I have two kids, I get about five hours sleep. So once a week, I actually take black tea bags. I don't take anything that you can buy them over the counter in your grocery store. I soak them for about maybe about two minutes and then I put them on my eyes for a 10 to 15 minute period. Like this? Definitely like that. You push them in a little like that? Push them into a little. And then in the evening on, before I go to bed, I do it on a Sunday evening, and I have my favorite music. Perfect. And they, they also work for men, just so you know. They work they for do? men and their puffiness. And then the other coolest thing that I do, um, like I said, I swear by this, I have a roll-on that I carry in my purse. Um, I use it twice a day. A roll-on what? It's actually an eye roll-on, and it's a cooling for tired and puffiness. So in the morning, I use a roll-on. You can buy it over the counter. But usually you roll things on. It's literally just a roll-on? It's just a roll-on. It's a cooling effect. It takes care of the puffiness and the darkness, and it gives you a cooling effect. They make effect. these things? Yes. I carry it everywhere I go. Like and so I use it. It's really nice. I use it in the day, and I use it in the evening before I go to bed. I and I usually it? you're doing it properly. So you just put it here underneath here, and then sometimes I do it up here because my eyes always hurt, and then just right in this area. And then do it day and night, and I do it in the morning right before I put on my daily cream. But it's a little bit moist. Is there water in there? What's it's, it's, it's actually a very light mixture of water, and it's no chemicals, so it's very, because the eye area is very fragile, so this is excellent for you. To I've got such big bags. I'm gonna try yeah. you. Can I keep this? You can keep that. Definitely, <laughs> Thank you, very you much. can keep it. Right. Well, there, listen, there's not science to back up some of these things, like this idea, but I gotta say, I think it's pretty cool that it's working oh, yeah. for you all. I'm very proud exactly. of you for sharing it with us. Thank all right. you. Question Does wearing shapewear change your eating habits? And what's your opinions? That's next. Next, it's things you don on the outside, but can shapewear falsely boost your confidence and make you eat more? Or will wearing restrictive shapewear keep your eating decisions in check? Find out if it's helping or hurting you. Coming up. All new eyes. Tired, moody, forgetful. My mind is all over the place. I can't even think straight. We have your brain fog fix. Simple ways to help clear your head. All new eyes. That's coming up tomorrow.
Countdown Show continues. In today's conversation, I'm getting four opinions on shapewear. Now, it slims you down on the outside, but does shapewear falsely boost your confidence and make you eat more? Or does wearing restrictive shapewear keep your eating decisions in check by reminding you what's going on? So raise your hands if you think shapewear gets you to eat more than you normally would have. Hands up. Oh, we got to volunteer. So you think you eat more? Yeah, Dr. Oz, every time I wear shapewear, I feel like I've lost 10 pounds and suddenly I feel like I can eat so much more. And so do you? Yeah, I do. Like what I, else do you eat? I tend to go for the desserts and the junk food and I eat more carbs and I end up gaining weight after because I've eaten more. So a false sense of security. Yeah. <laughs> now, who, who has the opposite sense that when you, here, pass it down, two down for me. Now you, you actually think that you eat I, less. I eat less. I think it makes me eat less. Also, when I wear them, I, I, it's so tight, it makes me feel like I'm going to pass out. And I tell my friends, <laughs> if I pass out, just cut them off me, and I'll be fine. <laughs> I'll totally be fine. I love that. Other thoughts here? Here, pass it up. Two, two up, two above you. Go ahead. I, I have the same experience. I don't eat as much. I think I'm a little more conscious of my waist being pulled in. It's reminding you. Yeah. I, the same. But I also don't like it because the fat comes out somewhere else. Yes. <laughs> if it's up to here, it's spilling out yes, over your arm. Right. It accentuates it's up to here, bulges. It's spilling out over your that's back. Right. That's right. That's <laughs> right. So here's, I'll give you my opinion, everybody, if you don't mind. Uh, my thoughts are if you want your shape where it's fine, you want them to leave a lasting impression on the people around you, not on your body. So if they're so tight, they're leaving dark grooves in you. That's not good for you. But you know what? We actually went to social media on this, and we had so many different opinions, including one from Amanda, which is very different from any of the ones you've heard here. She said, regardless of what we eat, shapewear is a reminder that you wish to look differently than you actually do. Sucking yourself into it makes me feel anything but sexy or confident. So lots of ways looking at this. I think you, most people have an opinion, so go to my Facebook page and weigh in. We'll have a lot of comments there. Up next, we're revealing the three dirtiest items in your kitchen. You might be surprised what made the list. Next, my audience is coming clean and confessing their biggest secrets. I have an item in my kitchen and I never clean it. The three dirtiest items in their kitchen and they're not what you think. The germiest everyday things you should be cleaning, coming up. Today, my viewers are coming clean and confessing their biggest secrets. My countdown continues. We're revealing the three dirtiest items you have in your kitchen, and they're not what you think. You ready for the first confession, everybody? Yeah. Right, let's light her up. Take it away. My first confession. Dr. Oz, I have a confession to make. I have an item in my kitchen that I use every single day, and I literally never clean it. Ooh, are you ready to reveal yourself in your dirty kitchen item? I am. Come on out. That's a knife block. <laughs> a knife block. And your name is Nancy? Nancy. Come on out, Nancy. <laughs> if you're not alone, you know, I actually polled the audience before the show, and 71% of the people in this room, 71% have never, never cleaned their knife block. I was one of them. <laughs> I've never thought about it even before. Who thinks about it? You yeah. think the knives are clean. Well, you do clean the knives, right, each time? Yes. Yes, usually. Most <laughs> of the time. Most of you clean your knife. Sometimes better than others. But think about it. You clean the knife, but you put any gradu in these little dark crevices in there, and they're moist. It's a perfect breeding ground for germs. Mm. So we sent the entire block out to get evaluated. And guess what we found? I can't even imagine. Right, well, it is unimaginable. We actually <laughs> found 42,000 colonies of bacteria. Are you serious? Yeah, in the knife block. And we didn't have knives with it either, just the knife block itself. Must be the kids. The ki of course it's the kids. It's always their fault. <laughs> right. But what's been lurking in your kitchen besides kids? There must be something getting in there. All right, so here's the deal. Uh, what everyone do is today. You take your knife, your, uh, your, your knife block, you take it upside down in the trash and bang it like that. Right? Any big stuff comes out. That loose debris gone. Now, very simple to do. By the way, you notice there are holes in the bottom? Yeah. That makes it easy to wash it out. Oh. So take a pipe cleaner like this. And you sort of go in those little holes, those crevices like that, mm. right? You can work through like that. You get the big ones even easier, right? And then go ahead and you do that. And then as you're doing that, you're going to start loosening up all this stuff that's not supposed to be in there. You can do this once a week, by the way. Ooh, that one's a little tough. Yeah, some of them are tighter than others, <laughs> all right? 
Let's try that one. All right. Well, anyway, and once you've done a little, enough of that, because you can't get it all out, you're going to wash it out. So you pour water in there, like ah. that. And this is not just water. It's got a little bit of uh, all-purpose cleaner in there, and it drains out the bottom. See, like that? Oh. Very simple, very easy to do. It'll take you almost no time. Great. Bang it, wash it, and you're done. And 42,000 less colonies will bother you. <laughs> keep, keep the pipe cleaner. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Let's get to our next confession. OMG, Dr. Oz. I have an item in my kitchen, and I use it every single day. I mean, I use it to feed myself, my kids, my family, even my family dog. I've never really cleaned it that good, but um, I didn't even think I was supposed to. Can you help? Very, very worrisome. Are you ready to reveal yourself? You with the dirty kitchen item. <laughs> Come on out. It is Kimmy with a can opener. Is that right? Yes, it's a can opener. It's a lot to confess to. You've never cleaned this thing? No, and you're, really. you're, The pet no. food cans get open with this thing too, you mentioned? Well, ironically, I clean the top of the cans, but not necessarily the can opener. Obviously, the can opener is touching what's inside, which um. then seeds this all kinds of stuff. So I was a little concerned about this confessional. So we sent it to the lab, and we swabbed it and found, interestingly, 140 colonies of bacteria, <laughs> oh right? which is much less than the crazy amount we found this, in this knife block. However, okay. we, well, I wanted to see what bacteria were there because I was more concerned about what you're opening with this can opener. Mm -hmm. So we found different kinds of coliform bacteria. Coliform is a polite way of saying bacteria that's in poop. Oh, thanks. I don't know if you went to the bathroom with this at all. Has it been around? No, no. I, I actually, I think someone's trying to frame me. Trying to frame you? Yeah. It's possible. Yeah. It's, no, things, worse things have happened. But actually, <laughs> I, I think most of us have coliformers hanging around the house from exactly. all different sources. It can aerosolize from a bathroom, but it can get there from the dogs or anything else mm. as well, which is why cleaning these things makes sense. We also found salmonella and E. coli, other things as oh, well. Like. You're not, on, you're not just on you. On other can openers, we found that. Okay. So it's pretty common, which is why we got to clean this. Okay. Simple, simple to do. If you wash your silverware, you got to wash your can opener. Every time you use yeah. it, run it under the water real quick, so easy to do, it won't take any time. By the time it's dry, you can put it away. Okay. And by the way, I noticed where you store yours. Um, can I show this picture, everybody? See, with everything else there? Oh, yeah. Everything else is clean. Why shouldn't this be? This is true. God bless you. Take thank care. You thank so you very much. much. <laughs> and thanks for being brave with that. Of course. Thank you. All right. Let's get to our final kitchen confession. Dr. Oz, I try my best to be healthy. I mean, I do smoothies and I juice every single day, but I think I have a really, really dirty kitchen secret. Ooh, please reveal yourself. I'm fascinated. It looks like you've got a blender there. Is it indeed a blender? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. <laughs> a blender with a beautiful woman. Bring it out. What's your first name? Tia. Tia. Yes. Thank you for bringing this. I know, I know it takes a lot to, to bring your dirty items to the show. Yes. So uh, I'm going to go through why for you and everybody else this is really important. There's a gasket ring. It looks like this. That's in the bottom of your blender. Yes. You recognize this? Uh, not really. I just found out about it within the past week. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and the reason you found out about it was we sent it off to get examined. Correct. And um, guess what we're hiding in there? 640,000 640,000 oh. colonies of bacteria grew from that basket. That's, That's the most so of any nasty. of these things. <laughs> I don't want it anymore. You know, <laughs> well, the thing is, people all over America have the exact same issue because few of us actually get into this little rubber gasket and clean the darn thing off. So I'm going to show you and everyone how to do it. Okay. Very straightforward. First of all, take a cup of water, add two teaspoonfuls of dishwashing liquid in there, and just go ahead and push it in there. Okay. Just toss it in there. Toss it in there. Right. Yeah. Don't, don't forget dishwashing liquid. Yeah. All right. And then you literally just turn the thing on. Just and off it goes. Awesome. And it will wash away most of the big stuff that's in there. Okay. So when you're done washing, you know, making your food with your blender, just wash off the big stuff, throw a little bit of detergent in there. Easy to do every time you do it. But there's something else I want you to do. Yes. I want you actually once in a while, not all the time, but I don't want to have 640,000 colonies of bacteria in your home. No. No, not at all. Right. You're going to take the bottom off of this thing, okay. which you probably have not done. Well, no, right. I haven't. And there's the, there's the gasket right there. And this little gasket comes off, easy to wash. Wow. You can put it back together again. And we do it every once in a while. We don't do it all the time, but every once in a while. Okay. But you know what? I don't want to burden you with that. So here, 
It's a little gift from the show. Oh, Since you don't want your gas gift back. Your eye. <laughs> Thank you Thank very much you. for braving the show. Up next, the <laughs> countdown continues with the top two health products you should have on your radar right now. Next, I'm really excited about two cool new ideas that get your health in gear. Tired, moody, forgetful? My mind is all over the place. We have your brain fog fix. Simple ways to help clear your head. Plus, Donna Karen built that billion dollar brand. See the empire she's building now. I have so much that I want to do. All new Oz. That's coming up tomorrow. No one, I mean no one, gets more excited than me when it comes to cool ideas to get your health in gear. So I'm counting down the top two health products to get on your radar right now. So when I find out about these new products, and there, are all, there are lots of them out there, I want you to be the first to know about them. So I want you to take a look at how you are sitting right now. How many of you are slouching? Sit up straight. That might, might help a little bit, you never know. Here's the thing, here's why I want you to sit up straight. Your spine has these natural curves, where that green line is. Keeps you balanced. When you slouch, all sorts of problems happen. Your pelvic tilts like this, actually backwards, putting strain in your lower back down here. And with that strain down there, it can cause lower back pain. You also have changes in the spine up in the back, where around the intestines, so there's less room for them to move around. And most importantly, maybe for many people, up here where your chest is, there's less room so your lungs can't quite expand as fully, so can't take in that sustaining breath. Finally, if you don't think about this, but your head and shoulders get pulled forward with up here, way up here, and that puts a lot of strain in your neck and upper back, and that can give you a headache. That's one of the most common reasons we have headaches. Instead of taking pills for them, pick, fix our posture, it can make a difference. So what if there was, what if there was a little gadget that would remind you to sit up straight? Joyce says she has the perfect solution. Okay, so I'm a serial sloucher, but I think I found the solution. And it's so small. No, I don't even know so where it is. It's called a Lumo lift. And it gives a little buzz on your shoulder. A little tap on the shoulder every time you slouch. Get my posture in here wearing it at my desk right now, and it's already buzzed six times. But I sat up and I feel better. I even wear it when I'm driving, because that's where I do most of my slouching. But not anymore. Okay, Dr. Oz, this is date night, and good posture exudes confidence. I have it hidden under my blouse. It's my little secret, you'll never know. So Joyce is joining us. How did the date go? Uh, the day went fabulous. My posture was good the whole time. Oh, I've been very <laughs> proud of you. So how often do you wear this? There it is right there, right? Yeah, this has changed my life. I am so excited about this. I put this on in the morning when I wake up. See how small it is? And I don't take it off until I go to bed at night. And the cool thing about it is it sends you a little text message to your phone to put it on when you wake up in the morning. Right. So you don't have to think about it. And you keep track of how many times you slouch and come Every back? Every time you slouch, it'll tap you on the shoulder, zap you, and you're right back up. Zap you? Zap like you. Like, does it hurt or just a little nudge? No, it doesn't hurt. It's like a little tap on the shoulder. It's a buzz, and no one else can even hear it. What does it cost? The cost is $80, but it's so worth it. Once you fix your posture, tell all your friends about it. Imagine how many postures you'll save. That's right. You spread the word. Once you train yourself. All right, so I've got two audience members who, unknown to all of you, have been secretly on the mission to wear this during the show. So raise your hands if you've been wearing this. Up oh, there, they are two victims. All right, so how did it work for you? How often did it buzz? I hate to admit it, but it probably buzzed about 30 times since the show started. 30 times? Yes, so I've been going like this. like this the whole entire time. <laughs> it's like I'm flying. So it changed how you sat. Oh, absolutely. And every time it buzzed, I would grab onto my friend's hand. It was kind of like a domino effect, and everyone <laughs> would sit and correct their posture. Did you seem so. nervous or comfortable with this? Pretty comfortable. Comfortable. All right. Make me nervous. I'm tapping me all the time. <laughs> how about you? Hi. How are you? How often did it go off? I would say probably about 15, 20 times. I actually thought I had good posture until this. I put this on. and. Um, so what's good posture? Is that good posture yes. like that? Because you do have good posture. Yeah. But I think it's going to be better for me for driving. Oh, sure. We all forget when we're driving. Yeah. One of the worst places. Which, so you would wear it, you think? After Absolutely, the show? yes. Oh, yeah. we have a customer. Yes. Thank you very much. You. Appreciate it. So I, thank, I want to thank you, Joyce, for doing that. Now, I've been told all of you many, many times that drinking plenty of water is essential for good health. So I decided to make a little recap of all the episodes where I've mentioned it. Take a look. How much water should you be drinking? You gotta count your eight glasses of water. If you drink enough water, you're thankfully drinking a lot of water. I want you to first drink a big glass of water with eight ounces of water. Coffee equals water. Fill it up with another glass of water. Most of our body is water. And what does the body do? It begins to use that water. Water, water, 90% water. A lot of extra water. Water, and we have talked frequently about how much uh, water you have to drink every day. 
So you get the picture. I talk about water a lot. Maria is here. So what do you have to help with hydration? I have the HydroCoach water bottle. This is a smart water bottle that helps you to calculate how much water you should be drinking, but better yet, it tracks your progress throughout the day. So how does it work? Well, you enter in your weight, and then from there it creates a baseline of how much water you should be drinking, and you can adjust that according to your lifestyle, how much activity you do. But then as you sip through the straw, it tracks how many ounces oh, yeah. of water are coming through. So let's show that. So that's tw is that 20, 22 liters or 21 no, ounces? No, that's 21 ounces that I've drank yeah. since this morning. Can you all see that little monitor there? It's pretty cool. What does this thing cost? $19. Well, it's a little expensive. It's changed my life. It did? Oh, I keep track of it. They have, oh, yeah, what are the other numbers? They're, oh, the time mm -hmm. keeps track of your weight. No, I'm kidding. No. <laughs> All right, Marie, thank sure. you very much. I appreciate it. <laughs> Up next, the number one way to sit less every day. It is free, it is easy, and you can start right now. The search is on. We're looking for a nurse to join our core team of experts to provide wisdom, expert commentary, and advice. If you'd like to nominate yourself or a nurse who's made a difference in your life, go to DrOz.com and click on hashtag nurse search. The final item on my countdown will get you on your feet. On average, Americans spend 13 hours a day sitting. The, the less you sit, the more you stand, the longer you live. It's that simple. One hour of standing a day can also burn 50 calories. That's about five pounds a year in weight loss just for standing. So tomorrow you'll be talking about the one way to sit less every day. Every time, every time you hear this sound, listen carefully. You hear it a lot, don't we? Whenever you hear that phone ring, I want you to everyone to get up and pace while you are talking on the phone. It's the ultimate multitasking. So here's how you're gonna do it. I'm gonna call. Arabella, my second daughter, who is the hardest for me to talk to. She just is never available. I had her pencil me in today. Let's see if she answers. Then again, daughters do this. They don't answer the phone sometimes. They're checking to see if it's me. If her mother called, she would immediately answer. And when I answer the phone at home, she says, is mommy home? Does that happen to all the men out there? Oh, there she is. Hi, she Dad. answered the phone. <laughs> I caught you. Hi. So honey, I just announced everybody that whenever the phone rings, I want them to stand up and walk. So would you be willing to do that for me? Sure. Lead by example. Are you in your apartment? Yes. All right, so I'll see how messy it is while you're walking around. Uh, no, I'll keep it right to my face. <laughs> so give it a, you're, oh, she's walking, 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 walking. So I got a little <laughs> bone of contention to pick with you. We went apple picking this weekend. And uh, yes. you're a little stubborn as you know sometimes. So these are two apples. The big ones are the ones I picked. The small ones are the ones you picked. Now, can I see the one you're holding? That's one of the ones I picked. No, this is a small one. No, it looks big to me. It's the honey crisps are the ones I like. You made, you made me pick, that's the big one. You took both of them. I, I have both. <laughs> <laughs> she, she decided, because she's so stubborn that she wanted to pick her own apples from her own tree. I picked them from my tree, and then she swapped out when we got home because she liked my apples more. I like variety. I like variety. I love you, honey. Thank you for being part of this. And keep walking around. Thanks for being part of the show. All right. All right. Remember, happy and healthy starts at home. Talk to your family. I'll see you next time.